Home and podcast time. That's right. Benford Tool is proud to present the Home Improvement Podcast. My name is Adam, and you all know my co-host Jordan. How you doing, Jordan? Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> We're talking about a special episode today. <laughs> but uh, before we we do that, uh, let's do our opening show banter segment <laughs> that we call opening show banter segment. Roll the jingle. No, uh, I'm, I'm not doing a jingle every time, are we? I know. No, I'm. I. I uh, I had so much fun making last week's jingle. You're going to make one every week? You know what? It's the difference between a slow work week and a busy work week is that <laughs> I uh, I was kind of sick last week. I uh, had a bit of a fever, a bit of a fieve. Uh, and, more cowbell, uh, baby. That's right. Uh, more jingle. Uh, mm. So I sat down and churned that bad boy out. And You know what? I think I had a lot more fun making it than people will probably have listening to it, but... That's uh, I think that's podcasting in a nutshell. Probably. Yeah, that's uh, that's the whole thing. But that's all right. You know, I appreciated your effort and your dedication to the fan base by putting in the extra time to do that. I liked that. it when you had to ask me what the last part said because <laughs> quality was so low. I'm still not sure I believe your answer, but that's all right. Blast off. Blast off. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. Jingle, freejingle.com or something? <laughs> freejingle.com. Fun, fun.com? I don't know. Fun.com. Speaking of fun. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess this is, it would be fun, but you've kind of got us blacklisted from any interviews with Home Improvement cast members at this point. Wait, but... go, what do you mean by that? What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I was just thinking, it's been a long time since we've had an interview with the likes of Richard Karn or Patricia Richardson or Carmen yeah. Finestra or even Brett White, you know, people not affiliated with the show. So I wasn't able to get anyone from the show or affiliated with the show or even likes the show okay. to talk to us. But I did find an Ask Me Anything Reddit thread with Debbie Dunning that I thought we, oh, could, we could dive through a little bit sweet. here. Sweet, so, I like it, yeah. Um, you know what, on the subject of interviews... I got something that I'll talk to you about off air. Oh. All right. So tantalize the listener. Yeah. But uh, oh. something might be brewing. All right. All uh, right. Back to your AMA. I'm interested. All right. Well, I've got about hmm, four or five things written down here that mm-hmm. are asked by various users on Reddit. <laughs> I shudder to think what people on Reddit would ask <laughs> Debbie Dunning. <laughs> well, let's just say I filtered through some comments. <laughs> poor, <laughs> that poor woman. I downvoted a few things. She handled some of those comments very well. You know, yeah. sometimes you don't need to respond to everything, but she responded to a couple. So it's hard having a bunch of people tell you how hot you are. Probably, <sighs> she's a classy lady. So yeah. let's kick it off with something from Goody FH. It's very small print uh, here, so it's I, I don't feel like zooming in. You know, in you either. can make it bigger on your computer. Can you? How do you do that? <laughs> the plus sign. Let me just get my old glasses oh, on here. No. <laughs> is, it, is it your new character? Oh, no. Crap. Uh, Grandpa Jordan, oh, I love this. Uh, Are you yeah. in an improv class like me? Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, sir. Yeah. You noticed, sir. Oh, God, All right. stop. Stop. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no. That's why we're... <laughs> That's why we're maybe no longer the number one home improvement podcast. I hey, know. who's saying that? Yeah. Back in my day. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Goody FH asks, did Tim ever actually get hurt on the set of Tool Time? Debbie says yes, he did. He, I actually, I can't actually remember how, but his back went out, and it was unfortunately the week that they were shooting a musical number where oh, they no. were all dancing. I remember he was sitting on the back of the convertible, and he was in so much pain, but the boy works hard, and he was hurting, but he worked through the pain. So, Tim Allen, nothing can keep him down. No, um, that's a good question. That's actually a good question. That I got to give that that uh, person credit. That's a good question. It was um, uh, it was upvoted twenty three times, and the most popular question that was asked. So that's how you know it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the second most popular was like somebody was like, "What's your measurements?" or something like that. <laughs> Those were all downvoted. <laughs> oh, so, and some remo- actually, like the next question, it had the comment removed. So I don't really? know what that means. Um, but she responded to it, and I didn't really. I don't know. Yeah, can't no context. Well, uh, interesting. Yeah, I believe. You know, Tim's a consummate professional. That doesn't surprise me at all. No. You know what's going to surprise you? What's up? This next question. (laughs) Yeah, I would suspect. (laughs) Glenn Gemin 9 asks, 
Did you get to keep any Binford Tools gear when Home Improvement ended? Debbie says no. The only tools that I kept were the ones that Tim Allen gifted the crew with, which I I don't think we knew that from any other interview. So that's kind of cool. Okay. But she did keep one thing. Can yeah. you guess? Can you guess what it is? What would she have kept? I mean, like a. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of the terminology, but is it? She often wears like the. Well, I don't know. Um, let me just say that she kept. Is it like a tool time belt or something? No, she kept her boots. Boots, that would have been a good guess. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Next question by Stone Cold Bob Saget. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt going to be a good question. <laughs> question is, how big is Richard Karn? <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. The answer... Uh, maybe it'll surprise you, maybe it won't. Well, you must be talking about his heart, and he's got oh one of the God. biggest hearts that I know. I'm very close to him, and still we golf together frequently. How big is Richard Carr? Jeez, oh, Pete's, man. What <laughs> if she was, like, seven inches flaccid at night? No, I'm just kidding. I, I thought it was a fat question, so I'm glad that, you know, she turned it to heart, and you turned it to something much well, more Well, you know what? If, I, no, that's not, you know, how, come on. Come Even on. your Sesame Street pornos that you I'm like to make telling, up. Like, I'm sorry, I live in the real world, not <laughs> your, not whatever world you live in. Where, I, hey, I just, I know, uh, I know how these things work. Okay, right. I wasn't well, born yesterday. Comedy fan sixty seven also knows how these things work. Yeah. Comedy fan sixty seven asked, and this is the last question that I have here of okay. this mini interview. How big, how big is Richard? Kind of still reeling from that one. <laughs> what Jeez. is your favorite episode of Home Improvement? Debbie says, I don't have one favorite episode, but one of the most memorable was when they went river rafting with Tim, Earl, and myself, and they got tossed out of the raft. There were so many funny episodes that the audience was able to see, but when you ask a question like that, I have to think more than a, uh, think back more than a week we were shooting and the experience that I had with the cast and crew. Okay, we haven't gotten to that one yet. I think it's called Whitewater. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, is referring to the Clinton scandal of the 90s. White yeah, water, the yeah, they the they tackle project. some and yeah. they go rafting as well. I don't know yeah, how that, that ties in, but Arkansas for us both. Um, yeah, I've seen the uh, thumbnail for that one a lot because they are whitewater rafting. So I am looking forward to that. Mm, you know what else we're looking forward to talking about? Um, engine and a haircut, two fights. <laughs> Episode twenty one, engine and a haircut. Two fights. Man, I'm still. How big is Richard Carn? I can't believe that question. That is insane. I mean, like that's exactly what I was, what I thought would be on there. But yeah, I can't, I can't. Good on her. Actually, you know what? Really good on her for not just like. There were there were a few that she like answered like that. So way to go. Yeah, way that's go. Uh, that's a shame, but I guess that goes to the territory. I don't know. It's true, uh, and that's going to be the question of the week later. So just you know, start well, thinking about your answer. Well, for what specifically? The Richard Kern question. Oh, Jordan, stop it! <laughs> All right, is this, this one is your grandpa character talking. You're like, oh, you're like Richard. George Bush grabbing butts before he died. Everybody's saying, he did, everybody saying he did it because he's too old. You know, Think, I get a little frisky when I'm older. <laughs> okay, all right. Enough. Written, by, <laughs> written by John Vandergriff. Uh, John Vandergriff last did when Harry kept Dolores, a very recent one. Wait, one... just, wait a second. I'm just looking at our iTunes, and we've actually lost reviews since we started recording this episode. <laughs> it seems like Apple is taking us off of the uh, <laughs> Apple podcast. Wait a minute. Negative downloads this week? How's that possible? <laughs> That's a problem. Grandpa, he, he causes some problems as well. <laughs> Aired on March 12, 1996, the title reference, as you mentioned last episode, is an old saying from around 1900, Shave and a haircut, two bits. The seven-note lyric was used at the end of several songs and was featured in several cartoons in the 30s and 40s. There you mm-hmm. go. No doubt. Mm-hmm. No doubt tasteful cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> like, we should scrounge some of those up. Yeah. And uh, right now we're going to scrounge up some alternative titles. Adam, how many do you have? One, two, three. I don't know, like four or five. We'll see how I feel. All right. Well, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hair owing experience. <laughs> I think you might have five this week. Yeah, maybe. All right, Randio and Ju- Juliet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, a Greek town tragedy. <laughs> what? 
I don't know, like a Greek tragedy. Oh, okay. All right. Greek all right. All right. I, I, I mean, if you weren't such a moron, I wouldn't have <laughs> funnier. <laughs> Just joking. Sour uh, grapes. Yeah. All right. How about uh, engine trouble? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know why I'm laughing. Uh, that hair? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Othello. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I'm glad you explained it. Those are I did my not best three. Those are my best three. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my last one. Brad's new hair don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now I know why we're losing iTunes reviews. Um... I don't even know if I want to bother with these. You gotta. Uh, I can't read what one says. This is just as tantalizing to me as that uh, interview talk that you were talking about earlier, so. Okay, Uh, singing. Marry me, Juliet, you'll never have to be alone. It's a Taylor Swift song. All right. Popular. (laughs) I guess. Very popular, years ago. Uh, And done the haircut. I don't know. I don't know what it says. So, uh, Was it a Don Quixote one? I wish. <laughs> Lost in La Mansa? No. Um, I don't know. You were it, you were doing a sentence that I love so much. Don the haircut. Yeah, I don't know. It's gone. Sorry. All right. Well, that's too bad. Because that yeah, means we have to it, talk I'll, about the I'll, episode I'll, now. Out the whimper. That was a really disappointing <laughs> ending. Just a great town tragedy. That's what I'm going to hang my head on this week. All right. Sounds good to me. We're going to open on Tool Time. It's Green Week. They're talking about recycled material to build homes. Uh, And they're going to do a demo using tires and aluminum cans to build some walls. And, uh, you know, there's some banter about how animals have been doing this forever. Some African hornbill builds his home out of dung. I just want to, I want to, did you say who wrote this episode? And I'm sure you did. John Vandergriff. Okay, and he's written a lot of them, right? Yeah. Okay, I feel like this episode's pretty poorly written. Um... They're just some really, I mean, it's not a good episode. Uh, I hate to spoil it out, uh, you know, <laughs> at the gate here. But, like, there are some jokes that are among the worst I think we've ever he- ever heard. And a few of them are in this opening scene. You don't like the uh, dung humor? Uh, I don't know that that's so bad, but, like, t- the, the, the setups are, like, the Tim is a stud joke as, like, a... St- that one's pretty brutal. I mean, like, and it's just, like, the setup's bad, so it's, like... They, we, they say uh, studs are used from old cars, and then Tim pauses. Guess I must have been an old car. It's just like, I don't know. Well, that was, might be something that Grandpa Jordan would say, huh? It was. I mean, this is just like terrible. And then the getting into Tim's like the animal humor later, where it's like a giraffe's playing charades and stuff, and it's like, I don't know. I noticeably some really really bad poorly written jokes in this opening scene Carry john on. john vandergriff adam's coming for you i mean i don't i don't like to but hanging them out to dry i gotta i gotta we're doing so many episodes of home improvement that like at this point i feel like i can pretty much say whatever i want <laughs> just call it like <laughs> you see it call it carte blanche. carte blanche all right so uh they're gonna use adobe to finish the wall and there's that there's a little text that flashed on the screen yeah that, that basically says Tim has put actual dung in this little mixture, and mm-hmm. Tim di- or uh, Al dives right in, takes his hand, and slaps it on there. And then another one pops up, and it says that Al replaced it. So Al is uh, wise to Tim's schemes here, and Tim makes a joke about, or maybe Al makes a joke saying that you not a joke, but he just has a fact that you can take this and put it on your face, and it's good for exfoliating your skin. And Tim asks him to demonstrate that, and he does, but on Tim's face. Oh, nasty. Nasty, Um, but actually not nasty. But Tim doesn't... He doesn't know. He doesn't... Yeah, he should think it's dumb, so he should be, like, really upset, and he, like... I don't know. He kind of licks it. Yeah, it's gross. He, like, (laughs) licks it. Like, what are we we supposed to get from that? Um, What is... What is this wall they're building? I mean, like, I know that it's not the focal point, but, like... Well, this is the wall that's going to be... Down south, you know. Oh God, Jordan, what are you, what are you, what? man, you are controversial today. I'm trying. Uh, no, like you, you, know, you can build a wall out of old tires and aluminum cans. Like, where is this wall going? I mean, like, if it's going to look like this, I don't. This is not a wall for a house. Like, where this is, this is wall maybe go? this is maybe a wall that you put Basement? on the outside of a dump. 
Okay, yeah, I mean, like, if the dump would want it. I mean, just like, it doesn't, I don't, I, I'm all about the green week on uh, tool time, but this is not very functional. It's not functionally green. You're um, all about aesthetics, and this is not pleasing you. I, I, mean, I don't know who it would please. Functionally green, by the way, that would be like a great rap album. <laughs> 420 inspired obviously all right all right uh so we move on that's the end of the start of green week it's a tough it's a tough start to a tough episode i gotta say it tastes like dung in the garage brad is working on an engine tim has been thinking for about five minutes about uh what (laughs) and what engine they want to put in the new hot rod i think he says five months but it seems like five minutes because we have not heard about this hot rod in i don't know 10 episodes 20 episodes i forgot there even was a new i know exactly it's like it's weird because like they spent so much time with the other hot rod and then it's that thing where like jay leno's there and then they buy the clunker right and then this is this is that clunker that was that seems like it was years ago i mean i know it wasn't but like it yeah it's been a long time since we we thought about this car it's strange it is strange, and it's coming in, and uh, Brad is saying something that his dad doesn't agree with, and that's power isn't everything. So they're kind of arguing about uh, a couple of different engines. They're having engine trouble. Let's just say that. Let's just say it. Brad is going to go get a new haircut, so he can't help our... I think they want to go to like an engine shop right now. Brad can't. He's got to go get a haircut. A fight ensues. Uh, apparently, they have these fights every time that Brad gets a haircut because he keeps his hair pretty long, as we noticed in the yeah. last few episodes. By the way, like, so does Tim sometimes. Like Tim's basically got a mullet the last like, three yeah, yeah, years. You I was know? gonna say in this episode, I really noticed how long and bushy his hair yeah, is. Yeah, so like I don't know. It, it seems a, a hypocrisy kind of laden conversation because his hair is like you know it'd be one thing if Tim had like a, a military kind of crew cut, but you know he's getting pretty shaggy himself. Yeah. And this is foreshadowing because he would play the shaggy dog years later. (laughs) What a connection you made. Is that, did you find that IMDb? I should add it. (laughs) I should add it to Reddit. Watch it get uploaded all the way to the atmosphere. Oh, man. If there's one thing I know, it's that posting anything about a home improvement podcast on Reddit gets no upvotes. (laughs) I'll say, how, did you guys notice how big Tim's hair was? (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. So, uh, Brad makes fun of Tim's old-fashioned hairdo. He says it's traditional, and that's the end of that scene. We wonder what's going to happen. What Wait will Brad's minute. hair look Don't like? Don't skip over. There's some lame stuff here. Uh, the record <laughs> record player jokes. Oh, yes. That's very good. This joke, this this episode, I don't know how... Man, I... I, I, should I, I also sing, skipped should over I an s- appearance of Mark, so shame on me. Yeah, well, let's go back to that. I don't know if I should... How critical I should be, but I guess I'll just double down. Uh, I don't know the writer, how old this person was, but these are some very old man uh, jokes. Uh, Brad, you know, like, oh, your haircut, it's, uh, I don't know what he even says. Like, he references that it's it's as old as the the black things that spin around and play music. It's like... You know what a record player is. I know, like, yeah, like, it's not... (laughs) She's in 1995. Like, record players were around, like, 10 years ago at that Uh, point, right? Like, I feel like people were still listening to records early 80s. So, like, it's, you know, it'd be like... It's as we old get, as like an iPod now. Like, we do, get do a high very, school kids now know like what iPods are? It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, I, I, we get a very similar joke later on with Ringo, and oh, I'm I like, know, I have a lot of things to say about that. Yeah, so I don't even a, get me started on. I that, have a big but. problem with that. So you're saying that John Grant Vandergriff might be like, I'm John Vandergriff. Stop oh, doing man. that! I swear to God, I'm gonna <laughs> take, I'm gonna edit this episode just so I can edit it out. No, I, I'm not gonna do that. But I don't like it. I want you to stop it. <laughs> I don't think people at home will like it either, and I'm going to ask them via the poll. Uh, no, I mean, like, I just think, like, the record stuff is stupid because, like, record, like, 19, like, people, not, kids now know what records are, I'm yeah, sure, it's but I, I guess maybe there's been a resurgence, but, like, in 1995, they definitely would have, and then Mark comes out and is like, we just learned about those in history class. No, you didn't. Mark, get the... <laughs> out of here okay <laughs> do you think they're talking about record players in the history class i didn't learn about records in my history classes and i'm roughly the same age as mark it was so. right after the boston tea party oh my god yeah you're skipping from what like i don't even yeah like world war one to oh yeah we're gonna do a whole unit on records it's really <laughs> really great stuff like, come on get that's, real mark's in an ap class that's all <laughs> 
Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't even want to speculate what level of classes Mark's in, but uh, if they're learning about records, then it's probably not very high. Oh, man. All right. At home later, Randy comes in, and he he's auditioning to be Romeo in a play of Romeo and Juliet, and G- Jill is very interested, wants to know how it went, and Randy gives the good news. He is in the la- the final three contenders out of four. It's kind of like us in our podcast. We're like top three home improvement podcasts. We're out definitely of one of the we're one of the top three or four home improvement podcasts out there. Of, out of four, out of four or five, probably. Yeah. So he's up against the, a guy who was a lead in all the other plays, and Jill says, "You know what? You've got this. You have it in your blood." And at first, Randy thinks, "What tool time? That's that's not any anything special. Not critically acclaimed." She says, "No, I was the best Juliet ever, and Othello." And apparently, she uh, she acted when she was younger. I don't know. Has she talked about this before? I don't know. But when she said Othello, I'm thinking about the Virginia gover- governatorial issues of late, and I don't know. Oh yeah, so, yeah. I don't, I don't. I'm glad they don't. I'm glad they don't go down that rabbit hole. But that could have been a twitchy subject matter. Yeah, I'm, uh, there were no pictures. Yeah, thank God. That's, that could have been very. I mean, bad. she could always just say it wasn't her, like they seem to. But uh, yeah, I was glad to avoid any. Glad to avoid any more with the uh, Othello references than what we got. Well, you made a reference in one of your titles, so that was that was the, more well, than we got. Called, uh, that's just you know meeting it head on. You know what? Yeah. Randy O and Juliet. That's where we're at. Jill wants to rehearse with Randy, and that's kind of where we're leaving off with that plot line here. Can and I ask Bra- you a question, Jordan? What's the second? Is this the second fight? Mm. Engine and a haircut, two fights. I know one of the fights, and we'll get to that in a second. What's the second? Maybe well, we should save this for, just for discussion at the end. Well, there is the second fight is kind of when he comes into the garage and Mark is his new favorite son. Oh, so we're talking about two fights as in, like, two fights that actually happen in the episode about the same thing, as opposed oh. to two fights on two different things? Sure. I I guess it's one of the... Maybe it's a smarter title than we ever thought. Like, there are two... There's two, layers. Two, there's two times when they fight in the episode. See, I was taking it as there are two different fights going on in the house, like, there's a fight between Wilson and Jill over who's... Yeah, that Julia. would be the other fight. Okay. Wow. I mean, who knew? Layers. I was also thinking there was a fight over the engine. Should it be a big block or a smaller one? Wow. So there's actually three fights? Shave and haircut three fights doesn't have the same ring. <laughs> That's Level, what was... Levels, Jerry. Levels. Yep. Levels. This is a very sophisticated... Sorry, John Vandergriff. We, uh... We, yeah, maybe we I disparaged missed, you maybe for I no reason. Him. You know what? I think he didn't have... I don't think he had time to write jokes for this one because he was so busy coming up with the title. Smart. Smart. All right. So Brad comes in for the first fight here uh he's got his new haircut the titular fight <laughs> that's the titular fight brad comes in with a new haircut it's a i don't know how would you describe this a ponytail of sorts up top and then uh, he shaved cut very the si- short underneath shave the sides there's like um there's like a line shape shaved into each side and it's a ponytail on top um it's a rough doesn't, look it doesn't look through today's lens i think it just kind of looks like a man bun sort of situation it's not really that shocking but i guess in 1995 96 it maybe would have drawn some looks i don't know it's hard because like also the funnier thing than the haircut is brad's jacket that is eight sizes too big <laughs> like it could fit three brads in it if it wanted to he's just he's just playing for when he gets pretty ripped so yeah i don't know like sure yeah the haircut, it, it's a shocking haircut i guess but yeah, i don't know it it uh yeah it's something well, my question is, what do you think Angela's reaction would be? Hubba hubba. <laughs> hubba hubba, huh? Yeah, I think she'd like it. It's uh it's it's alternative. Alright. Well Brad's a bad boy, you know? He certainly is. Jill is shocked, doesn't really know what to say. She kinda she's trying to come around to it in the moment and not say anything too mean, and so she she kinda does. Uh she gets used to it and she says she likes it. Tim comes in and he's got a different attitude. He says, what the hell happened to you? He's much more harsh. He says, you look like an idiot. And yeah. it, it kind of escalates. And Brad takes offense to this. And he's feeling kind of hurt. And Tim says, you're not going to the hot rod shop with me like that. Yeah. Jill is, uh, and then, you know, Tim and Jill proceed to, like, kind of have a longer discussion on why Tim's mad, et cetera, how to handle it. And uh, Jill is right here. You know, like. You can get mad about something like this, and maybe you think you look silly, and it's a little bit embarrassing, but, like, it's just hair. It will grow back, you know? Ultimately, like, you can get really upset about it, but 
it's gonna, it's gonna look different in a month, you know? Yeah, but he's gonna just keep going back to this same haircut. He loves it so much. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, hey, uh, seems like small potatoes to me, but uh, I guess uh, Tim, Tim, you know, he's worried about getting embarrassed around his his friends and well not uh, only that i think he said uh haircut leads to ear piercing leads to tattoo leads to crime leads to jail yeah rational thinking undoubtedly <laughs> and then another haircut so yeah the, the fight over leniency jill remembers how tough her parents were on her and what that led to and that's why she's trying to be a little more flexible it's here. kind of uh kind of vague at the end she Tim mentions, like, uh, she's like, you know, I rebelled. And he's like, yeah, you're braless ears. And she's like, you know, I did worse than that. And I'm wondering, like, Jill killed a guy? <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? How much worse are we talking about? Was Jill, did Jill burn down a building or something? Like, wh- wh- where are we going with this? But we, we don't, we don't get there. We don't find out. Uh, yeah, at home later, though. Yeah. Jill and Randy are rehearsing. Yeah. Jill is being quite dramatic. And Randy tries to get her to rein it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's pretty bad. She's she's pretty rough. Yeah. Arbit- arbitrarily, I think anyone would agree with that. Tim comes in. He agrees with Randy's assessment as well. And they move back into the garage. And this is where we get the second fight that I was kind of mentioning. The, the favorite- titular second fight. Yeah. The new favorite son, Mark, rolls out from underneath the... Well, we got to say before this, Tim has like a discussion with Mark where he's like, you're my favorite. Right. And there's... it's. Like, I, I joked about foreshadowing earlier, but, like, they're talking about Ray, or, uh, Mark coming on with a weird haircut or whatever and how Tim would react, and it is very much foreshadowing, <laughs> on, you know, whether they knew it or not of what will come with Mark's goth face. So that was kind of funny. My favorite part is that Mark knows that he's not his favorite son. <laughs> yeah, that's, a sad, that's kind of a sad realization, isn't it? Like, he's he's like, just yeah. like, why is this happening all of a sudden? Yeah, it's like, I know I'm not the best looking or the smartest or the most popular or charming but uh you know yeah it, that was kind of sad but it's uh it's pretty funny yeah and brad comes in through the side door of the garage a, a not often used part of the set and a, a fight kind of continues here it's the same kind of fight where they're fighting over what kind of engine they're using he obviously isn't listening to brad's advice and it gets very juvenile again like we just saw in the last scene and and doors are slammed and they move on yeah, Tim is um, Tim is very childish in this one. Each fight kind of devolves into a, a shouting match of you know, you know, kind of na 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 boo boo esque sort of stuff. It's too bad. They need to cool down. They need to go outside, and that's where we're gonna head. And Jordan, I think outside uh, we should go ahead and play a clip. Let's do it. The strides a lazy puffing of the clouds and floats upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. <laughs> Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Ah, uh, Wilson, I gotta tell you, you're a much better Juliet than mom. Well, thank you, young Randy. I wouldn't want to disparage another actor, but at the Greenville School for Boys, I was known as quite a breathtaking Juliet. <laughs> and it wasn't easy playing a love scene opposite that pimple-faced Herman Dilbert. <laughs> you know, I got nothing from him. It's like acting with a head of lettuce. Wilson, could we? As you wish. <laughs> or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Well, I guess I'm the one that's no longer a Capulet. Apparently, I've been replaced. No, you haven't. I, I was just out here rehearsing with Wilson, so I'd be good enough to rehearse with you. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, I am so sorry. I had no idea I was usurping your role. Oh, come on. You've had your eye on this part all week. (laughs) Now, that is not true. Young Randy came out here and beseeched me to step into the role. You beseeched him? (laughs) I didn't beseech anybody. I don't even know what beseech means. There is no way that Wilson's Juliet is better than mine. You know, the Hockaday Herald Mm. said that my Juliet was so moving that they didn't even need Romeo. Ah, well, my school newspaper said that I was a astonishing Juliet, a vision of budding femininity. Oh. Girls? Girls. My audition's tomorrow. Who's going to help me? I will, I will. will. Uh, Romeo, Romeo, where for that Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love. And I'll no longer be. 
rose. Uh, what's in a name? That which we that call which a rose. Rose by, by any, any other name, name would smell, smell as sweet. sweet. So Romeo. So Romeo. Yo, Romeo. Randy and Wilson are uh, practicing in the in the side yard. A little little Shakespeare action. Um, Wilson has replaced Jill, uh, and he's he, you know he's had his own experience uh, doing playing Juliet years ago. Uh, it was an all boys school. Har har har. Um, Jill comes out and she's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't even know if is that a joke or not. What is it? Uh, whatever. The crowd uh, laughs, but I don't know. I yeah, know. like uh, okay, funny. Uh, Jill comes out and she's mad that she's been replaced. Um, her you've been Will's, eyeing this. You've been eyeing this uh, part all week. I think there's she some says. jokes about beseeching. Uh, her and Wilson kind of fight back and forth, and uh, eventually Randy just says, "Deuces, gotta go." And yeah, Randy's it. Randy's pretty frustrated because everyone is. Uh, they're, they're, they're making more, it about themselves. Yeah, and it's about him. He's the one who's got the tryout. He's the one who's got the chance to be Romeo. Yeah. Pretty selfish of these adults here. Yeah, these adults need. You know what? They need to get a get a life. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> okay. Get a life, you two, huh? Yeah, we're the ones to talk. Doing Seriously. 121 episodes of Home Improvement. Podcast. This is not my full time job. I have other things going on. Thank you Are very you much. Sure? You know, sometimes it feels like a full-time job. Next scene. Back to Green uh, Week. Green Week continues. Uh, Tim, uh, they're supposed to be doing something with cars, and, and uh, I don't know. Al, uh, Al is relegated <laughs> to a closet, and then Tim addresses the audience uh, in a way that I often like it when he does this, but I don't know if this one does a lot for me. Um, this is funny. He says, he asks a very specific question, which is like, <laughs> any of you guys out there ever have to scold your kid about a haircut? Of which, everybody in the audience raises their hand pretty much. Apparently it's like, this is an epidemic. It's like, every, yeah, like all the dudes are like, yeah, I've had to do that all the time. My kid, <laughs> my kid come home looking like balls. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so he calls a guy down. He, he plucks Kendall out of the uh, audience. Kendall, yeah. Uh, I'll do a bio for Kendall in a second, so don't even worry about that. Um, but uh, Kendall and Tim do not have good chemistry, which is kind of part of the joke. Uh, Kendall's boy, Cloyd, which was maybe the only joke that worked for me in this episode. It's a Clem combination and Lloyd, between huh? Clem and Lloyd. I think you got to just go with Lloyd in that case. But um, he had a punk haircut, and uh, Kendall, he, um, you know, he yelled at him and so on, and uh, didn't quite work out too well. Because he joined a cult, Jordan, and they haven't heard from him since. Yeah, four years later, haven't heard from Cloyd, who is now Baba Ra something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it didn't work out, and so Tim is left with this realization, am I going to alienate my son that much by doing this? Is my son going to join a cult? Uh, Kendall is played by Joseph Whip. Uh, Ghost Ride the Whip. Yeah, uh, wow, a lot of credits. (laughs) Really? Uh, 100, specifically. Wow. Uh, Jordan appeared in films such as A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, no. Scream. Wow, two good ones. He must be uh, a pal of, um, what's the guy's name? Wes Craven, the director. Uh, Escape so. from Alcatraz and Deadly Games. Um, let's see if he's still alive. Still alive. Uh, last appeared in 2014 episode of Criminal Minds. Um, he's on that crime circuit. He's on that crime circuit. He did an episode of Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> And Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> so there's some crossover between Home Improvement and Lizzie McGuire. Um, yeah, let's see if there's anything else interesting that catches my eye. Ooh, Werewolf, the TV series. Oh, boy. It sounds fun. Sounds like Frightening. Something, Frightening. Like something I would like. And uh, uh, that's pretty much it. But uh, I got a Nightmare on Elm Street. Sergeant Parker. I could go back and see that. Um, he's all right. You know, there's not a lot to do here. Pretty deadpan. But uh, I guess he has some comedic timing and uh, and so on. But... I don't know. The episode just kind of stinks overall, so it was hard for me to appreciate really anything. <laughs> I thought anything. you liked this one. This episode? Yeah, you love what are, it. What are you talking about? Get out of here, Get out of here Grandpa. All right. Uh, don't, <laughs> what? Don't, and don't, don't, don't say I don't remember asking you. No, nah, you don't do stop that it. to me. Jeez, stop it. I hate it. All right. Let's let's get done with this. Uh, let's get done with this. Yes, let's get this done. Rather, uh, go ahead. Back at home. Let's get done with this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Cloyd, get here! <laughs> now you watch your Stop mouth, oh, man. doing that. <laughs> Next scene. Jill is upset at home. Tim comes in. Uh, Wilson is more convincing as a 13-year-old girl than she is, so she's eating her feelings. 
Tim says it's time to reconcile with Brad, and he goes upstairs. It's quite the mess in here. I was wondering, is Marie Kondo going to come to the door? <laughs> hey, Jim, hey, Brad, if that trophy doesn't spark joy, get rid of it. <laughs> Tim says, um, you know what? You can wear your hair how you want it. And they talk a little bit about like why Tim was feeling that way. And Brad says, didn't you ever want to do this yourself? And this is where we get that terrible, 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 terrible Ringo joke where apparently Brad doesn't know who the Beatles are. Yeah, that's weird. Because, like, again, kids now know who the Beatles are. Like, everybody knows who the Beatles are. Like, the Beatles, Elvis, and, like, Michael Jackson are people that, like, I think everyone in the world knows, no matter where you are, I think. And and Cardi B. <laughs> i don't know that's not my experience but maybe i, I don't know maybe I'm old. uh can they not say, can tim not say the beatles here because he does not say the beatles hmm. is, there, is there a copyright thing good question i think maybe he couldn't say the beatles because he really goes out it was like ringo fab four yeah 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 this is a conspiracy theory that i did not think of i don't and i i mean i'm sh- like the thing about all this stuff is like copyright law is probably not that interesting to look into, but I'm going to ultimately speculate that he could not say the Beatles, which is not the point in any case, because like the fact that Brad doesn't know who Ringo is and like the Beatles, like just, you don't need stupid. to say the Beatles yeah, for him to yeah. know. Stupid. Yeah, it is dumb. So yeah, Tim wanted to have Ringo's haircut. Uh, never which could do it. Which he basically does right now, kind of. <laughs> I mean, like he's not that far <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah, and Tim mentions that you sometimes become your parents, and it's scary. Tim says, let's start working on the hot rod. I need your help. He, he still wants to go with the big block, and there, there's kind of a tie-in joke that we didn't mention earlier because it's so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, everyone's doing it, and Brad says, if everyone's doing it, would you do it? And they mentioned that earlier in the episode. Brad says, don't go with the crowd. Don't go with that kind of popular opinion let's uh let's let's do something else let's do this small engine option that we have he's got a magazine points to it they head to dundee michigan Mm -hmm. Uh, ever been there adam yeah but (laughs) no funny stories though Yeah, i think i think that's uh dundee isn't something crocodile dundee yes in la (laughs) but that's we're talking about dundee there's there's like a a big old cabela's there or something yeah, yeah i was gonna say an outdoorsman place there yes yeah uh, I think you're right. So maybe that's where they're going. So there you go. Wow. <laughs> they're not that's going there to look for about, engines. I don't know about other home improvement podcasts if they know as much about Dundee as we do. <laughs> Probably not. And all's well that ends well with that problem. We move on to the final scene here. Randy comes in. Apparently this is after auditions. Randy has the information. Does he have the part or not? Jill is very anxious But Randy will not divulge the information unless she agrees to not practice and rehearse with him if he got the part. Mm -hmm. Randy did get the part. After she agrees, he he lets her know that and then runs upstairs. Yep. Episode 121. Real credits fade to black. Engine and a haircut. Two fights. (laughs) Yay! That was better better than anything in the episode. Jordan... (laughs) <laughs> lows and high i mean if you have any highs maybe you liked it more than me I, you didn't complain as much so it's possible yeah i guess i didn't hate it as much as you i do agree there's some pretty poor jokes like the dis the not disco there should have been a disco joke i'm in surprised here. there wasn't yeah that would actually you know what disco make more sense in records i don't mm. know yeah so the record joke the ringo joke they obviously didn't land the you know, I do like that there is a little bit of a focus here on the kids because we haven't had that in a really long time. So yeah. we get the Brad Rebellion picked up where it left off and we get... Uh... <laughs> Brad Rebellion. <laughs> this is just Brad Rebellion. <laughs> it's ominous. Uh, and then Randy gets a little bit of a focus here. And then even Mark is in it for more than he usually is. So I do like a little bit of a focus on the kids. The segments on Tool Time are not very interesting. Uh... I don't know. It's, it's it's not great. I'm maybe a little bit below average, but I I don't I don't think it was as bad as you thought it was. I guess so. Why don't you tell me what you liked and didn't like? <sighs> um, what did I like? Well, um, I don't know. I guess like what you said, the kids have more to do. We don't. They haven't necessarily had a lot to do of late. Uh, I, or maybe I thought, I thought they might have killed their kids. That's what Jill did. 
Makes makes me wonder. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I guess I appreciate the kids having uh, some some work to do. Um, well, I was I mean like I don't know. I I, I kind of said it throughout the episode. I think I think this is a fairly poorly written episode. The jokes are bad and just kind of like even worse than bad. Just like lame. Um, I Jill was like a caricature in this one. She's just like running around, just sort of a buffoon, which is probably fun for her to act like, but not necessarily that fun to watch. Um, the Randy stuff, because of Jill, is kind of sullied. Um, Tim was fairly foolish in this one, uh, childish. Uh, tool time didn't do much for me. Yeah, just uh, not not a good one for me. Well, there you go. Uh, that there you have it, huh? That seals it, huh? Yeah, so I guess we should. In the I guess, books. And I guess we should move on to son, Sean, Sean's. Wow, Sean's social media corner. If you'd like to reach out to us, go to thehomeandpodcast.com, dot com at Facebook and at Twitter at Home and Podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to your favorite podcasting app, leave a review that helps other people find us and lets us know that you're listening and enjoying the show. You can also donate monetarily by going to patreon.com slash home and podcast where we are doing bonus episodes every single month uh, on something related to home improvement, not related to home improvement, whatever yeah, we feel like. Yeah, I rebranded uh, our Patreon when it didn't tell you, Jordan, so uh, we're now calling... Our bonus episodes, Home and Podcast After Dark. Home and Podcast After Dark. So if you want exclusive access to that, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month. There's also things like stickers, and uh, we give you options to pick episodes that we might talk about. I don't know. What else would people want? You let us know. Become a patron and let us know, and uh, support us in that way. Adam, I think we have some polls to talk about, finally, and I want to hear the results, so go ahead. Jordan, two polls to talk about. Wow. And these are polls about polls, which are probably the best polls. Super meta. Yeah, it is meta. Um, meta right, world so, peace. Yes, Jordan. Meta world peace. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so. <laughs> Why don't uh, you tell me about your polls? Jesus, stop. <laughs> Good God. Stop. All right. <laughs> we'll stop recording and we'll just leave it like this. All right. <laughs> Which version of Randy? So there was a poll, and you I don't know if you can remember this, but uh, we you you talked about polls, and one of them was like, which version of Randy do you prefer? Yeah, uh, which older one or won, younger? Yeah, which one won on that online poll? <laughs> That's a really good question. Because we should we should say that. <laughs> uh, I can find it. Hold on. Okay, I think it's important. Fan pop, baby. I mean, don't act like it's not bookmarked on the top of your browser. <laughs> I was hoping it would show up when I typed in fan pop, but next to fun dot com and. YouTubing old man impressions. <laughs> I've got a great old man impression. I didn't know oh, it. Oh my gosh, it's great. <laughs> I think it sounds different every time I do it, though. So it's... It does not. It sounds the same every time you do it. It's always bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jordan, um, can you report in who won uh, the poll online? Yeah, if our fans recall, uh, back a couple episodes ago... It was older versus younger Randy on fanpop.com, mm-hmm. and it was older, mm-hmm. 67% to 33%. So Which 67. I was really surprised by. You were super surprised. All right, so our po- our poll got 37 votes. Dang. Oh, man. Dang, daddy. Um, and Jordan, this is a friggin' barn burner. <laughs> Coming in at 51%. Oh. Older takes the cake over younger, 49%. This is, this is a very tough question for people to answer. Divisive as divisive as it gets uh i still say younger but you know what 51 percent of the people have spoken that's right and only 15 people voted on fanpop.com so 37 so we're we gotta... more popular than fanpop.com <laughs> nice who, who would have thought yeah uh the other poll um can you report back whether people preferred the older or younger brad on fanpop yeah that was actually younger 58 percent to 42 percent all right well you know what younger takes it here to 23 total votes it just shows the lack of interest in bread compared to randy uh 70 percent say they prefer younger 30 percent say older so um did you do a mark one no (laughs) i should have i don't know why i didn't i just didn't because it wasn't a part of the fan pop ones but i'll say that for a rainy day i mean it is on fan pop i just didn't talk about it how many votes like two (laughs) I'll let you know right now. Who do you think won? Older versus younger? I mean younger. <laughs> younger in a landslide, 73%. How many so votes, though? Five? F- 15. Whoa! All right, well, we got to do this. I have a feeling that if we do this, it will be 100% younger. 
Yeah, but, probably. But yeah, Brad only had 12 votes. This is vexing to me. Well, in any case, uh, those are our polls. Otherwise, um, you know, some good stuff going on on Twitter. <laughs> if, you, if you follow us, you know what I'm talking about, baby. And uh, follow us and uh, you can see some funny, I think I think pretty funny stuff, good content. So uh, yeah, find us at Home and Podcast. Wonderful. All right, we don't have anything in the mailbag, right? No, I don't think so. No, no new reviews either. So we move on to the question of the week, and it is my turn for that. Adam, pretty simple one. Can you tell me about your worst haircut? Uh, yeah, this is what I would have asked too. Um, my worst haircut. Um, okay, I can tell you. I, I have a story. I don't know if it's my worst haircut, but a, a haircut kind of gone wrong. All right. <laughs> So the well, new, popular new show haircut haircuts gone wrong. gone wrong. I mean, the mask singer is taking over, so I couldn't haircut. Why not? Wrong, a thing. Um, all right. So probably not that long. At, like I'm thinking 1998 or something. Um, Davis, Michigan, middle of the mitten. Uh, I the trend was, and you will probably remember this, though I doubt you took part in it because you're, you're kind of a modest mouse. Um, An- Anti trend. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Other people would just say dull. Um, but it, people were getting things shaved into the sides and backs of their heads. Oh yeah, uh, it was a popular thing. Yeah. Uh, so, what'd you get? What'd you get shaved yeah, into the back of your head? I'm getting there. All right. So uh, I had seen some people that were getting Nike signs shaved into oh. the back of their head. So, Free advertising, baby. Yeah, pretty cool. So I went into, and I can tell you where this place was. Uh, I don't know if it was a Great Clips or not, but. It was over by v- old VGs before VGs okay. moved across the street. In that strip, um, there was a haircut place, and I think it was called maybe Fantastic Sam's or something. Um, but it's basically where, uh, and this is for no one. Uh, <laughs> for me, audience of one. Doogie's Dollar is there now, I think, or something. Yeah, buddy. Along those lines. Yeah, cool. Uh, it was there. And the woman, I went in with my mom, and I was like, um, my mom was sort of like Jill. She's like, yeah, you can get whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Your hair. You want to look like an idiot? Go ahead. <laughs> um, and, the, and we asked this woman, she's like, and we're like, can you do a Nike sign? She's like, yeah, I know what the Nike sign looks like. And then she did it, and it just kind of looked like a check mark in the back of my head. I mean, like, it look, it bore no resemblance to Nike. It was basically <laughs> Adam a hockey, Beats, check. hockey stick check mark. Uh, so, I mean, that was, that was pretty embarrassing. I was only eight, so, like, I don't remember it that well. I'm like, I don't think it was that big of a deal. But I did have a check mark, basically, in the back of my head for quite a while. Um, so. <laughs> like, uh, like you came off an assembly line and you had like all the it, parts? Yeah, yeah it kind of looked like that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have, uh, as you said, I am a modest mouse, so I didn't do anything too crazy, but I did have just terrible. I think in eighth grade, ninth grade uh, was when you would just kind of let your hair grow out and be long. Uh, a lot of That's what you did. <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of kids uh, did that, especially in the basketball team. You wouldn't know, Adam. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> sorry i was five six in eighth grade you know what you know i was i was six three next year i probably would have made it <laughs> all right so yeah there was just one where i just kept let it growing and growing and growing so my bangs were like down it was like past, over your eyes right oh yeah past my eyebrows it looked so dumb and then whenever they would cut it it was just basically like yeah you can keep it basically the same like just cut the bangs a little bit <laughs> what a pointless haircut you could have done it yourself yeah so shout out to grandins for putting up with my crap i guess jordan i gotta ask as we get older how's that hair holding in for you are you losing it yeah i've got a i've got a widow's peak it's pretty, it's I'm pretty sorry. Br- I'm sorry to bring that up <laughs> it's pretty brutal uh you know <laughs> perhaps i perhaps this is revenge for the basketball comments <laughs> i would say uh you know it, it's it's receding a bit but we're still fighting strong <laughs> <laughs> you should, it's, like, it's like the Seinfeld where George is, uh, comes back in. Uh, sh- you sure have lost a lot of hair. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I'm to hear that. I'm not bald yet, but I am green. Let's say that. You know what? If I know you, you're going to make it work. That's right. That's right. So, Speaking of making it work, what are we covering next week? Next week, next episode. It's one you've been waiting for for a long, <laughs> long time, and that's The Longest Day. It's one of the funniest episodes they've ever done. 
Yeah, can't it's wait to talk riot. about it with you. It's a laugh riot. Maybe right, well. maybe Grandpa will make an appearance. Uh, he better not. All I have to do is for maybe Grandpa sits this round now. I know how Grandpas are with illnesses. They don't they, they don't like to talk about it. it reminds them of their own uh, mortality. Demise. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, thank you for joining me, listeners. Thank you for listening. And I guess I should say, take care. Take care, everybody.